This tutorial will show how to create nonlinear compound components for steel beams and columns using FEMA components. FEMA components are based on a chord rotation model. In this case, we will create beam and column elements for use in a simple planar frame, such as that shown here for a pushover analysis. The beam will be a W18 by 119. The columns will be W14 by 176s. And the base of the columns will be pinned. The beam will be made from the FEMA beam and stiffened end zone basic components, while the column will be created using the FEMA column, stiffened end zone, and moment release components. Let's begin. To define components, select the Modeling Phase and then the Component Properties button. We start by selecting the Cross Sections tab, and here we will specify the steel sections to be used in the FEMA components. Under Type, select Beam Standard Steel, and then specify a name, and we will use Beam W18 by 119. Select the W18 by 119 section from the drop down list of standard sections. And note that the properties are all now displayed. Because this section will be used in an inelastic element, select the Inelastic Strength tab and select Yes for the bending. Our elements will have flexural hinges. We will set FY or the yield stress equal to 36 KSI, but we'll leave shear set to no, for we are not interested in shear yielding. Click the Elastic Strength tab and leave blank as our elements are all to be inelastic. Click the Check button and then Save. Next, we move on to the columns by selecting the Column Standard Steel section type and specifying a name of Column W14 by 176. Again, select the section from the Standard Section drop-down list and the properties are displayed. Just like the beam, the columns will be inelastic and thus no elastic strength definitions are needed. On the Inelastic Strength tab, select Axial Bending and click the Yes option. Enter a value of 36 KSI for all the yield stresses. Click the Plot button and note that both the PM2 and PM3 curves are displayed. We will leave shear and torsion blank as we are not interested in these types of yield behaviors. Click the Check button and then Save. We have finished our cross-section definitions. Next, we move to the Inelastic tab. Here is where we will define our Inelastic FEMA components. We start by selecting the type as FEMA Beam Steel Type and naming the component FEMA Beam W18 by 119. With the Section and Dimension tab selected, Click Yes for the Use Cross-Section option and select our previously defined beam. Switch to the Basic FD Relationship tab which references the shape of a relationship options and we will use the Elastic Perfectly Plastic option rather than the Trilinear. Enter 15 as the ratio of DX over the yield displacement. 
Note that because of symmetry, no negative values are entered. Next, we will switch to the Deformation Capacities tab and then select Yes under the Deformation Capacities option. This allows us to specify various capacity limits based on the yield displacement. In this model, we will assume level 1 to be immediate occupancy and set the capacity to 2, level 2 to be life safety and set to 6, and level 3 to be collapse prevention with a capacity of 8 times the yield displacement. We will not have any strength loss and thus this tab remains blank. We could also run a series of analyses where we bounded the inelastic responses, but we will not do this for this model and will leave this option set to no. We are also not interested in cyclic degradation for this model, so this will be set to none. This completes our FEMA beam component, so we next click check and note that the EPP symmetric curve is displayed and then we save this component. Next, we will create a FEMA column component. We will name this component FEMA column W14 by 176. Again, this section will be based on a cross-section component which is the previously defined column. Switching to the basic force displacement relationship tab, we will again use the elastic perfectly plastic relationship. We will enter 15 as our dx to dy ratio for all actions. We will also enter deformation capacities for the columns for all three levels and a value of 1 for the axis 2 to axis 3 ratio. And just like the beams, we will have no strength loss no bounding for the analyses and no cyclic degradation. The yield surface tab shows the yield curves. We are now ready to check the component which shows the EPP curves, and then save. This completes our FEMA components. Switching to the elastic tab, we will now define two elastic components. The first is the stiffened end zone, which is to increase the member stiffnesses where the beams and columns overlap. A default setting is defined by the program where the end zone for the beams is one half the column width and the end zone for the column is one half the beam depth. We will use a multiplier of 10 for the stiffness. The second elastic component will be the moment release at the column bases. The moment will be released about axis 3 and we will assign a small value of 0 .001 for purposes of numerical stability. Next we check this component and then save. The basic components have now been defined so we move to the compound tab to assemble them into elements. The FEMA basic components we just defined for beams and columns 
are made up of a plastic hinge at one end connected to an elastic member. We are going to add a stiffened end zone to the ends that connect to other members. One important item to note is that a FEMA compound component must contain two FEMA basic components connected at the point of inflection. We will assume this point of inflection to be mid-span for the beam and at the bottom of the pin columns. We start by defining the beam compound component, which we name beam. On the Basic Components tab, we select End Zone, which is the default component with a length based on the section properties, and then click Add to enter it into our list. Next is the FEMA Beam component, our W18 by 119. This will have a proportional length of 0.5 for a mid-span inflection point. The same component is entered again for the second half. And then another end zone. This completes the compound FEMA beam component, which is now displayed. We click New and enter Column for the Column Compound section. Working from the bottom up, we start by adding in the moment release at the bottom of the column. Next is the first FEMA column component. But because the inflection point is at the bottom, we will set the length to a very small value. The second FEMA component is nearly the entire length. And we top off the column with a stiffened end zone using the default settings. Clicking check displays information about the pinned releases and the inflection points. The layout of the column is now shown. This completes this tutorial on defining FEMA steel frame components.